this is what you will require. 1. PVC pipe. Choose the size that is most appropriate for you. PVC elbow. Personally, I prefer working with a 4 inch diameter PVC elbow. 3. PVC reducing bush or reducer. 4. PVC floor drain cover or floor drop cover. 5. PVC glue or cement. The brand doesn't matter as long as it serves the purpose. 6. Silicon sealant. Also, the brand doesn't matter. 7. Butamen sealant. And number 8. Of course, you need the pond liner to work with. 9. Heat gun or any other source of heat. Ten, plastic ball, and eleven, a pair of compass. To start with, you will take the four-inch elbow joint and scrub it on one side so as to make the opening wider than normal. This widening is to give an allowance for the liner to fit in tightly during the installation process. We only scrub on one side because that is the side we will be using and the other side should remain intact because that is the side where the pipe will be connected to. Next, let us test our reducing bush to see whether it is also fitting well. In this demonstration we are going to use a reducing bush of 4 by 2, meaning that we are reducing our diameter from 4 inch to 2 inch. But remember, this will be for a small tank or pond. If you have a bigger tank, you can use a reducing bush of 4 by 3 or you can just use a 4 inch pipe to fit into this joint. Remember that when the liner is covering this part, the drainage pipe will be exiting from this end, this other. If it is a big pond, you can use a 4 inch pipe to get into a 4 inch elbow joint. That is if you are having a big pond. Now, if you are having a smaller pond or tank, you have this, which is a reducing bush of 4 by 3. This is a 3 inch pipe and this is the reducing bush. So you just insert it there and you drain using a 3 inch uh, drainage pipe. If your pond is, your tank is smaller, now here we are talking of a tank, if it is smaller then you use this and with this one you insert, it is a 4 by 2 reducing um, bush, 4 by 2 reducing bush. So you also insert it there and then you drain it outwards. And there is a mechanism you can use to do the overflow which I will be discussing later. Once we have confirmed that everything is in order, it is now time to fit in the liner. We are going to use a small sample for this demonstration, but in the subsequent video I'm going to make, I will be showing you how this is done on a typical pond that I'm working on at the moment. The scrubbed part is the one that will be facing up and the liner will be passing on top of it. This is our liner material. It is a, a 0 0.5 gauge which is thick enough. We now identify the spot where the drainage pipe is located.
we then mark the center we will then make a hole of about 2 inches diameter remember the opening is 4 inches but we are making a smaller hole Once you have marked out the circle, you then proceed to cut out using a razor or a pair of scissors. Remember that in a practical situation, this cutting will be done in place. That is, you don't have the option of moving the line away. You just mark the pipe margin and then you mark the center and cut it out within the pond or the tank. In the next step you will hit the area around the hole but within the 4 inch diameter so that it becomes soft enough to be folded into the elbow joint. In order to ensure that the heat is restricted within the area we want we are going to use the floor drain cover and direct the heat downwards towards the liner. This is because we don't want the liner beyond the targeted area to be softened because it may make our life more difficult. Once the liner has been softened, we remove the floor trap cover and then we use a ball of 4 inches to press the softened liner into the elbow joint. This forces the softened liner to stretch and bend inside the elbow. It is actually derived from uh, the float valve that is used in controlling water levels. I have just attached this ring to allow me to be able to pull it out once it gets inside. Now, when you use a ball or a round object, it is smaller. It is smaller on this side. So it means if the hole is small, it, op it widens it as it moves in. Now compare this with an object like this is wider than the hole, so when you push, it actually pushes the liner inside rather than stretching it outwards. Similarly, you cannot use a pipe, though it gets in very comfortably, but you cannot use it for the same reason, since as you push it in, this part will actually push the liner inside instead of stretching it out and widening it. However, you can use an object that has a smaller diameter on the one end which widens as it moves further from the narrow end. So this means when you push in, when you push in this object, it enters through the hole first and then as you push it in further, it widens the hole up to the diameter of this object. But remember, this diameter must be around 4 inches so that it presses the liner firmly as it pushes into the elbow. One thing to remember when you are using a plastic bottle or any plastic object is that the liner is quite hot. So if we just push it inside the elbow when it is empty, definitely it will be distorted because of the heat. The best thing to do in order to maintain this circular shape is to put water inside, cold water. So this cold water will ensure that the plastic does not deform as you push it into the elbow joint to widen the liner. Remember, put in cold water. 